Do you notice anything wrong with this Linux command? If you don't, you're not alone. In fact, most guides that you'll find on Google use at least one example of this very same pattern to search for files. If I go to Google right now and search for how to use the find command and click on the first result, the article that I see includes this example. If I go back and click on the second result, this article contains the following example. If I search for find command instead and click on the first result, the article that I see includes this example. But what they don't realize is that this command has one subtle flaw that can have devastating consequences. Let's review an example to illustrate why this is true. Assume you're working within a source code repository and you'd like to do some cleanup to get rid of unused files. In this case, your goal is to keep only the Python source files that end with a .py extension and delete all other types of files. To review a list of all files that are present in this repository, you decide to issue this command at the root of the project. To find all files with the .py extension, you issue this command and see the following result. Then, because you're interested in deleting any file that doesn't end in .py, you issue this command, which shows the opposite set of files. Now, because you want to actually delete the set of files we just found, you decide to add the dash delete flag and issue the command again. After inspecting the results, you find that this command successfully deleted exactly the set of files that you intended to. Because this process works so well, you decide to save this command so that you can use it again in the future to impress your coworkers. Later, you decide that you need to perform the exact same task of deleting any file that doesn't end in a .py extension from your repository. However, this time the repository contains the following list of files that is slightly different. So again, you decide to issue the exact same command that we just used with the intention of deleting all files that aren't Python source files. But to your surprise, you find that you've just deleted way more files than you expected to, including most of the ones that end with the .py extension, with only a single file remaining. What just happened here? Almost all of your files are now gone forever. The key problem here is the lack of coding around the wildcard used to specify the file extension. If the command were rewritten to enclose the wildcard in single quotes like this, we would have gotten the desired result of deleting only the files that don't end with the .py extension. But this doesn't explain why it ever worked in the first place. After all, we didn't use any quotes the first time, but we still got exactly the results we wanted. To explain this, let's make a short C program that does nothing other than print out the parameters that are passed to it. If you run this program with the following argument in a directory with no Python source files, you can see that the output includes the literal wildcard character. However, if you create a file in this directory that ends with the .py extension and run the same command again, you'll get the following result. As you can see in this example, the shell will first attempt to expand our wildcard pattern to match any files that are present before passing their expanded names to the program we want to run. This is called globbing. Globbing is an operation that is performed by the shell itself, and it happens independently of the actual command we're running. You can type man glob or man 7 glob for more information. Therefore, you should be aware that the value of the arguments that could pass to a given program will actually depend on the contents of your file system. If we create more files that end in .py and run our command again, you can see that the shell expands this wildcard to match all files in the current directory that have the .py extension. This also implies that your program may be passed a different number of arguments depending on how many files match the wildcard. Looking back at the contents of the current directory from the first time we ran the delete command, we can see that there are no files at the root of the project that have the .py extension. Therefore, the wildcard star.py didn't match anything and was passed to the find program completely unchanged. In the second example, the repository contains one file in the current directory that matches the .py extension. So the shell will replace the star.py with test.py before the find program even gets a chance to look at what we've typed. Most importantly, the find command uses a different algorithm than the shell globbing does when matching wildcard characters. More specifically, the find command will apply the search pattern against the base of the file name with all leading directories removed. This is contrasted from shell globbing, which will expand the wildcard between each path component separately. When no path components are specified, the wildcard will match only files in the current directory. This is what leads to the confusing case we just saw. This diagram shows a flowchart that describes the logic that will determine if a program ever gets to see an unquoted wildcard character at all. 
An important observation to make is that the core problem we've encountered here is actually something you can encounter with any Linux program and not just the find command. In fact, if you attempted to use the grep command with a wildcard to filter the output of find, you could encounter the exact same kind of mistake. It just so happens that most casual uses for shell commands don't encounter this problem. Having said this, there are a few other cases where unexpected globbing can cause you problems. For example, any case where you make use of unquoted variables in shell scripts can be a source of bugs. This very simple shell script takes whatever text you supply as the first argument and pipes it into the xxd program to produce a hexadecimal dump of the argument. Most strings that you supply as the first argument will be interpreted literally. However, if you supply wildcard characters, even if they are quoted, they will be expanded by globbing inside the shell script since the variable in the script is not enclosed in quotes. Another fairly contrived example would be a situation where you're using a command like bc to compute the results of a mathematical expression. If you're working in an empty directory, you could use this command and see that the result is 16. However, if the current directory contained a file whose name was also part of a valid mathematical expression, the result could be changed to anything, since the file name would get substituted as if it were part of the mathematical expression, which is probably not what you want. 